Hello everybody, this is Budrich and I made my first post on the XFCE forums today uh, because I created uh, something related to the XF panel here uh, which doesn't really have to be uh, XFC specific. I think you can use this uh, XF panel bar with uh, out a desktop environment and even with other desktop environments if you would like to do that for some reason. Um, and what I've done here is uh, creating this gen modify script uh, which uh, longtime viewers might recognize. It's very similar to uh, polyfy which was a, a script, um, a wrapper script to, to manage uh, polybar hook modules. Uh, and I thought that the um, XFC E4 panels didn't have uh, hook modules. And it doesn't really do have that, but in a way it kind of does. And it actually works very similar to polybar hook modules. I just found this out. I thought I, I would have to in, uh, create my own panel plugin uh, just for to get it, get this uh, functionality, which I actually really, really miss now when I don't have it. Or now I have it because I created this gen modify. But I kind of had it all, all along because all you need is this genmon plugin, which is a common plugin. It's part of the XFCE goodies. Uh, so the genmon plugin display cyclically run script or program output onto the panel. Um, <clears throat> it is more or less like a normal um, polybar module, like a script module. <clears throat> you can install this uh, either with the XFCE for goodies package, which I think it's called on both on in, in Pacman and in apt. Um, see here, yeah, XFCE for goodies is like a group of, of a lot of, of goodies for the XFCE for desktop environment and this is included there but you can also install it like standalone like installing this package but if you do you will miss out on, on some new features here so I will show you how to to build this from source which isn't uh, super straightforward at least not on Arch uh, you have to, to specify a, a bunch of uh, command line uh, uh, arguments like this so let's do that. Let's build it from source. It's really fast, but uh, I will also show you what these uh, features that you will get or that you will miss if you don't do this. You can even read about it here. The new features is that you can display icons, uh, clickable icons uh, and a progress bar. I think this tooltip thing that works in, in the this version at least. Um, but this icon uh, functionality is actually quite nice because otherwise you have to Manu you, you can uh, display images in, in the uh, old version here that's available in the package managers because this one isn't released yet. But I don't really understand the, the, uh, how this works. You know, why, why don't they just update the software? It's not like this will make anything uh, break any backwards compatibility or whatever. But maybe they are experimenting a bit with the feature because they're, they're, it is a, a slight a kind of weird syntax. But we get back to it. Clone this repo. I will link. I link my forum post at least, and, and all the other links are there. But maybe I, I link everything here. Clone this repo. Copy the URL. Um, do a git clone. Clone this repository, and then we can clone it to tmp gen monk because I'm not sure if I have a genmon already. So then we navigate to that directory, uh, tmp genmonk. There, it looks like this. We can open it in Thunar also, so you can see. Uh, tmp genmonk, this directory. And what you want to do now is execute this auto gen script. And I, I think that if you are on Debian or Ubuntu, 
then you don't really have to, to do what I'm showing you now. But on, on Arch, uh, you might have seen this, that sometimes when you install programs, you need to set this prefix in, in one way or another to make sure it says USR and not USR local, because I think that's the default here. Uh, so in this directory, paste this uh, or enter this command here. And this command is actually not in the readme either. It just say that you should set the prefix, but I have found that you also have to set this, at least this lib exec deed. Uh, not sure if these two are needed, but these two are definitely needed. I'm also not sure about this disable static, uh, but whatever. So execute that with sudo pass these options. I will paste the commands in the show notes or a pinned comment or something. And it's quite fast to build this. There, it's built. Uh, when it's, or it's not built, we, we, what we have done is we have more or less generated a make file here now uh, with this autogen script. So now we can build it. Then you can do a sudo make. You could write sudo make install there, but sometimes it's nice to just see that it did build correctly, which it did. So now we can do sudo make install. And that should install this for us. To test that it is installed, um, you can right click anywhere on, on the XFC panel, select panel, and then yeah, we can select add new items here directly if we want to and search for generic monitor. There it is. I want to add this in there. Now it's added here. Kind of don't like this, uh, only open this. So usually I actually open um, panel preferences here also, and then go to items here, because that's a really convenient way to organize uh, uh, the items. So now we have, the, have this generic monitor here. And from this window, you can also click on this button to change the properties of this uh, 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 plugin here. But you can also right click on it directly and select properties here. Now it asks us for a command and this is how generic monitor works. It's very simple. We can remove this label and then just as an example here, let's do the date command, uh, date percentage capital S and then we can set the period here to two seconds and see how that works. Save there. Now it displays the seconds here but it updates every two seconds. It's, it, it's a no-brainer understanding how that works but if you know me you know that I don't like these types of, of panel plugin things that, that where you launch a script in a set interval, you know, because this means that every two seconds now for the whole day, for the whole year, it will execute this date command. And even if this is just a simple, stupid, single command, but most of the time you execute a script because um, this uh, Genmon plugin here, it can, it have like a special format. We could uh, take a sneak peek of it here. You can set like TXT to display the text, IMG tags to display image, click, bar, icon, and so on. And this is the type of, of text you want to your commands to generate, and then it can display all kinds of graphics and stuff here. Uh, and having a script that generates something like that, run run every five seconds or something, that's, that's, uh, that's not good, especially when, when there is no update in the information. So that is why I liked uh, Polybar's hook modules so much, because that works a bit differently. Instead of setting a set interval, it doesn't update at all. It updates when you send a signal to Polybar, then it updates. And now I'm talking about Polybar here, but this can actually work uh, the same way. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> there is a, a secret little thing here in this readme. To refresh the plug plugin, issue this command. And I figured out how to work with this and, and get almost exactly the same uh, functionality as Polybar's hook modules. But you cannot disable this period and you cannot set it to zero. Uh, then it will just go to the lowest possible here, which is a quarter second. So instead, what you can do is set it to the highest value here. 
just enter uh, as many digits you want, press enter, and then it will automatically set it to the max value, which is 86,400 seconds, which also happens to be 24 hours. And that's okay for an interval, in my opinion. Okay, so now we have this set up here. We can save that for now, because now we also install and now we can also see it doesn't update here. It will update to a new second in 24 hours. Um, <clears throat> now we can also install Gen Modifier, which I have already added to AUR, so you can find it there if you are using Arch. Otherwise, clone this repo and make sure this Gen Modify, Modify script here is in your path. It's just a single bash script you need. You can also add this if you want to, but whatever. I will show you here. And I will use AUR. Uh, yay as uh, gen monify and it should install that there <clears throat> and if you if you want to test this I really recommend you follow these steps make sure that generic monitor uh, builds correctly and that you can add a module like this before moving on here it, because this gets a bit messy here to set this up but no it, don't don't worry it's not difficult and everything or not the installation steps here maybe I should write them how to build uh, gen 1 from source but there, there's lots of information maybe too much in, in this readme no gen monify is installed we can just uh, issue the gen modify v com command here it will display in uh, version information I, I recommend you do that too then let's do this yeah i guess it, this is the config directory just to make it really clear here let's browse to that directory no it didn't work of course uh, bud show hidden files uh, dot config where are you up here there it is dot config and let's remove this just so you can see that it will get created damn it uh, could not delete okay skip them What? Okay, maybe this directory doesn't exist. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I thought I deleted it. Uh, because on your system, in your .config directory, there is no uh, gen modify directory. But you can just execute this command without any options or anything. It will always create this directory if it doesn't exist, if you execute anything that's not v here. So gen modify feels like something is weird with this there it is uh, the directory and inside that directory is a file uh, and you should open that file because here we can find some information now uh, on the most important step that we need to take here let me just look at the notes here also Announce, get source, build, AUR, demo. Yeah, let's uh, no, let's do this. Okay, we got Gen Monify. In Gen Monify, it works like this. Gen Monify, it works just like uh, uh, Polyfy. Then we can say module, and then we can say Franz as the name for the module. We don't have a module named Franz, but it doesn't matter. And then we can say hello and then just press enter and nothing seems to have happened but if we remove this last part then it will instead print this stuff here which is the stuff that genmon uh, wants to 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 display something we could uh, could change the color to red or something like that and then the output will look like this instead foreground red we could add like uh, icon uh, warning. I don't know. I don't think there is an icon called warning. But now you can see that is also added here. So this is more or less what this does. 
And then you just hook your Genmon, uh, uh, your Genmon <coughs> thing up to to one of these uh, Genmonify modules. So you do this. You set Genmonify, and then either long option module or short option O. They do the same thing. Then you name this module. We could main the, name this uh, main mod or whatever. And then save here. And if everything worked, it should clear that mo module. Uh, but this is not enough for it to work. You might think that uh, we can now do main mod hello, but that will not work. Well, it did actually work. <laughs> that was kind of weird. Yeah, 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 I know I know why it works uh, because we only have a main this is a diff this is different from Polyfy because in Polyfy it needed uh, modules to work and stuff But here it will interpret this main mod that is not we haven't specified that yet here in in our modules list so then it will just use the default uh, like a, a, a fallback uh, module and if you only have one uh, Genmon plugin in your bar like this, then that that is perfectly fine. And if you intend to only use one one Genmon, then um, you don't need to follow the rest of the steps here. And this should work now. We should should be able to set the foreground to blue. Change the text, and you see the text is immediately blue, and so on. No, this works, yeah. And if you add clear, then it will just clear uh, that module. Okay, but what if we add more uh, of these uh, Genmons here? So we have two. We can add one to the far right and one to the far left. Uh, and then let's close this one. Open the properties here. And then we say Genmon by uh, O, and then we can call this second or something. Save, and it just clears. No, Genomi. I, I made a typo in the command. Gen monify. And also remember to set this to, to max here. Just enter series of digits also i like to disable this label so, so we really get a clear module <clears throat> okay and we call that second so now if we do this main mod mod again in some text let's see who's get updated yeah this one and even if I would say second here now, I think this main uh, module will still get updated. We change the color to red. No, now uh, nothing uh, worked here because we, we have to set these modules up. You really have to do that. And what I mean by that is that you have to make an alias for it, like, like here. We have to add it to this module list and say main mod. And then this have to match the plugin ID. And this is a bit weird here. Uh, you can find this plugin ID uh, in two places. Either in this file here, um, this one, this path, config xfc for xfconf xfc per channel xml xfc for panel. In this file, look for genmon. Uh, uh, values here and you, they look like this and here we can see the IDs here ID 18 and ID 19 and you cannot be sure if this is 18 and this is 19 it's not uh, completely obvious here it doesn't have to be that but there is one way to figure out which one is which and that is by let's see if we can find that it's not that important actually. Whatever. Maybe we can also 
also resize the window a bit. No, oh, here it is, here it is. Here you can see, this is the all, all the plugins. We have 18, 7, 12. So 18, that that is far, far left. The eyes here is probably plugin number 7. And to the far right we have 19. So this is also a good way if you want to, when you want to set them up, uh, spread them apart like this, then it will be easy. And then you can move them af afterwards because they will keep their uh, IDs. Uh, but when you got these IDs, you can add them to this module list. So main mod should be called 18 and second should be called 19. And be sure here, this is important that you uncomment this, remove these hash marks and don't add anything else to this, uh, uh, this file. Now, when that is saved, now it should work here. Now we should be able to, to target the second uh, and there. We got red text there. We can write some other text and it should always be in, in, in that module. But if we change this to main mod, we get text, the red text here instead. So now you can individual, individually uh, control uh, two different uh, uh, or as many gen mods as you want. And they will only update uh, once every 24 hour. But as soon as you execute this, it will reset that timer. So, so it will basically never do that. And when it eventually do updates, all it will do is execute this command to display what's in, 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 the, in the output, so to speak. In the, yeah, it, it, it will just cut this information once every 24 hours without your knowledge if you're unlucky. And that, that, is, that doesn't matter at all. Okay, uh, so really quickly here, um, or maybe I should show you this because I found a, a little hack here that you can use a sed command that parses that XML file I, I just show, show, show you there, uh, XFC for panel XML. If you parse that with this sed here, it will list out all IDs of Genmon uh, uh, plugins. But you cannot be 100% sure about the order, but it's kind of easy to, to uh, track down which one is which, you know. And remember, if, if you remove these uh, genmons and then add new ones, they might get new IDs. So, so just so you know how, how, how to set this up. And this is a little bit of an inconvenience, uh, but that's just how it is. But after this is done, it's very smooth sailing. <clears throat> Alias file, ID stuff. Yeah, this is basically everything we need to know how to set it up. I can just quickly show you some, some of the uh, uh, commands here. So if we use this main module, and also let's close this panel window here, because you can see the red <laughs> box around the whole, whole panel. When you have that window open, you get that red blinking box. It's very annoying. Uh, so module main mod. Um, Hello. Now just say hello with normal text. We saw foreground is one option. Uh, background is another to set the background color. Is that icon? Uh, then we need a icon file, and maybe it's a good idea to use the icon browser. See if we can find something. Yeah, let's just take this audio volume high. I don't know what we get if we copy this clipboard. If we get the name. Um, no, audio volume high. There, we got the audio volume high here. And you see it, it, it is resized correctly. That is the benefit by using icons because it will actually use the actual icons from your theme. And if this works, I haven't tested this, but it should work. If we change uh, icon theme here, it should change that image here on the fly for us. And it does, it's kind of beautiful. Um, so that's the benefit by using icons, because the old way was uh, using images instead. We can also take a quick look here at uh, the output now with the icon. Then we can see that's added as a new line, so it's actually easier to read this output than it was in Polybar. But you can do much less with it, because 
Here you can only make the icon clickable. You cannot make the text here clickable at all and you can only add one icon per uh, Genmon. You can of course uh, do it without any icon whatsoever or maybe you can't know when I think about it. Yeah, I have to fix that. I don't think this will work actually. No, that prints out the output here. Yeah, I should fix that so you can set just an icon. Um, but the other way to do this was to use images. So then instead of, of writing an icon, you, you specify the path to an image. And then you cannot just write the name of an icon. That's another benefit. You don't have to write the path to the icon in your icon theme. GTK automatically figures that out for you. If you want to use an image, uh, then you have to find an image somewhere. And let's see if we can take one that's... Uh, proper here or whatever we will not see what it what it does anyway plan 9 versus linux or tdux here okay so image and then the full path here and then if we execute this also with some label here you see the the image it, it displays the, the full image and this is like a wallpaper <laughs> it's not that usable uh, but some images you can get cool effect if you if you take a smaller image then you can get something that spans a, an area of the bar if you would like that uh, we can just clear this out here first clear uh, so let's go back and use the icon instead so if we want the icon here to be clickable clickable then you add the option icon click and the, the argument should be a, a, a command so for example I don't know gimp just we can also see now that the icon is turned into a button here so when I click it it actually gets the click state and stuff here clicking this should execute gimp and it does But you can only add one clickable thing here, the icon. No right click, nothing, and you cannot click this text in, in any way here. If you wanted an image instead, uh, if you use the, the default package, because you can only add this icon and icon click with the new bleeding edge version of, of Genmon. Uh, but you can also make images clickable by using the same uh, uh, command but without icons. So just click and then GIMP or any command ah because we had clear in here but clear we just override everything and clear it, clear it we can also see that the image is also a button here now clicking that now it brings up GIMP um, just so you know how it works um, Another cool thing with these uh, that, that you didn't have in, in Polybar is that if you hover uh, stuff in the bar, you get a tooltip for most of the icons and items. And you can uh, change this tooltip here uh, with Gen Monify. Gen Money. It's a really stupid name. Sorry. Do this. Then it's a tool tip, and there are short options for all of these uh, uh, arguments here. Tool tip uh, something. Now, if I hover this, we should see the tool tip something. And this tool tip uh, argument here, you can have new lines in it, and you can also add Pango markup uh, to it. I will not go into any details about that, but you can you can change fonts and colors and everything on the tooltip text it itself. <clears throat> Last thing that the, or there are two things also that is because all of this you can already do that with uh, uh, in, in Genmon. This doesn't really add any functionality; just make it convenient and and gives you this functionality, so you can change this on the fly from wherever, from a terminal, from a script after something is done you know uh, but there are two features that that you get with this gen modify 
One of them is that uh, you can do this time or whatever. We just set the text here to time out hello. Then it says time out hello. And, and you can see here, even if we have click GIMP here, nothing will happen when we click it. What I wanted to show you is the timeout function. Uh, I don't. I think the long op option is expire dash time. It's the same as with notify send, but you can also use the short option t, and then the number of seconds. So, for example, three seconds. You could change uh, the text also. Change text. It says change text here, and after three seconds, it should clear itself. And that is something that that is a unique feature here to, to gen modify and also polyfy. Last uh, now but not uh, least is uh, the msg fun function, the message which lets you set the secret uh, uh, message like this. The secret message isn't displayed anywhere in the bar but it is visible if we execute this, we can see it, that we have a message tag here with the secret message. We also got the click here. It can be good to know that the commands are still written here, but they, you cannot execute them from, from the bar if you don't have anything to click. But the secret message here, I made it convenient to, to fetch that uh, by using get option. And then it just prints whatever is in between these uh, 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 angle brackets in the message uh, line and this can be used for included in this gen modify repository is this gen modify pop a really short script here just a couple of lines but what you can do with that is and, and it's also installed uh, automatically when you install it with a make file or from AUR uh, what this does is that you can reset this message you have to prefix the mes message with poly pop as it say here and then a space and then any command here like for example notify send uh, popped up hello then set this nothing happens But if we do uh, module main mod get, we see we get this. But if you now would ex execute instead uh, gen modify pop, and you also have to uh, give gen modify pop the name of the module here, main mod, so it knows where to fetch this. If you do this, you see, now it executed that command in polypop here. And th this is actually very useful. I use it, here's one use case. I, I will not set it up in this video, but maybe we can make a, a, a video about, about that. Let's say you are downloading a podcast episode from internet. And I like to set it up so when I'm downloading, uh, for example, a podcast, then uh, I can set the text here to say downloading pod dot dot dot. And then when the pod is finally downloaded, then it can change uh, the information here to say download complete exclamation mark uh, and e maybe even make it red, you know. Uh, and then I can also add like mpv um, new pod dot mp3 as the polypop command and then bind this gen modify, uh, gen modify pop command to a key binding, meaning I can download a pod. When I see that it's downloaded, I just fire my key binding and it will automatically play that pod or launch that command. Maybe open that image or whatever it is, you know. It's, it's, uh, I, I used it all the time uh, and I missed it so much. Both these uh, being able to, to monitor things like that. And now I can also make uh, a monitor here for when I'm recording. I like to see how, how long I have been recording. And also uh, media information from MPV. I and all of this, I have it set up for Polyfy. It's, it's just a matter of changing a few small things. Uh, because there are some things you cannot do with, with Gen Monify. And there are some things you cannot do with Polyfy. So, for example, icons and images, you cannot do that in, in, in Polybar and Polyfy. But in Polyfy, you can add much more 
uh, uh, actions uh, like left click, right click, and you can add uh, several uh, click areas in, in one module and stuff. So, so it's more powerful in that sense, in my opinion. And I actually prefer that syntax that the polybar is using there. I think it's uh, from Lemon Bar. I think they were first with that uh, 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 formatting, that markup that they used to to do that. Uh, but whatever, they are doing it this way and it's much better than not having any hook modules at all. And I will spend some time now to to set this up and, and add my old uh, uh, Polyfy modules here. And you can do it, use it for all kinds of thing, things. Uh, one uh, popular video I made once uh, was, uh, you know, I have this uh, BWP script that uh, changes wallpaper. And I remember I, uh, I made a, a polybar module that uh, displayed the current wallpaper. If I could press a little button and then it showed the, the name of the wallpaper uh, currently displayed and you could also click a bunch of other buttons uh, like uh, next wallpaper, previous wallpaper, delete current wallpaper and things like that. And then just click a little toggle button to hide all of that information. Making something like that with Gen Monify uh, will be a little bit more, it, it will be different, but it is possible to do so, but you have to create uh, a separate uh, uh, module for each button. Um, but it's not impossible at all to do, and I, I thought maybe I should uh, should make a video where I, where I create that, because that is kind of the most uh, advanced uh, way you can use this. And it can be a good uh, demo, and I already know uh, how to do it. I already did it once with, with Polyfy. And in some ways it, it, is, it is not like super messy and super complicated. And these modules shouldn't... Um, use uh, any resources at, at, at all since they are just static they they just update every 24 hours or never at all until you just say okay now is the time to cut out the information of this file and, and print it and, th and that is that is like nothing if you do it a couple of times a day uh, big difference if you you do it every five seconds like many people do with their bar scripts um, I don't know if we can find this uh, gen monify or here we can see these are the two panels here and I think this RSS I'm not sure I am not exactly sure what that means. I think it's this private bytes, virtual bytes. Whoa. I don't think it uses 300 megabytes, this single mo module here. But 29 and 52 megabytes feels like a lot of megabytes too to display something like this. Whatever. I don't. <laughs> Maybe maybe it is really bloated to use this. I, I'm not sure anymore. But uh, it doesn't feel like it. And XFC is known for being snappy and lightweight. And we will see if it breaks down. But I haven't had any issues. Even if I just had this for, for like a couple of hours really. I just made this and released it immediately. So, so uh, yeah. And I wanted to announce that. I, I will uh, link to everything here and try to write down the, the commands for those who are interested in building it from source. Um, and this uh, said the help thing here, that I, I guess that's really useful, so you don't have to look into these weird uh, XML files and stuff like that. But I think you can, we, we, with this, you can get just as much customization as you can with Polybar. Uh, and in, in some ways even more, since you can set uh, images and icons. And sure, it looks like you cannot customize anything when you open the properties here. No colors, no nothing, you know. But everything can be fine-tuned in um, uh, CSS, in the GTK CSS. And you can have a special uh, CSS for just a bar and stuff like that. I haven't looked into that too much, but I plan to um, diving into that a bit. Because I, I, I feel it's, 
that is really something that uh, um, is lacking uh, information uh, about how, how, how that stuff works and it doesn't have to be that complicated and I think a lot of people choose to use like i3 and polybar and stuff because it's much easier to, to configure and, and get into but uh, it's also very limit, limited you know uh, polybar and minimal window managers and stuff you can actually do a lot of things uh, if you just figure out how, how, how all, all of it fits together uh, whatever I am in this uh, GUI mode now uh, we'll see how long it lasts uh, but that's uh, where I am right now we'll see what we do next video uh, I had other plans I, I wanted to do this you know the, the info monitor displaying information about the currently active window I think we should get back to that also also have some plans rewriting uh, i3 list and um, I have some work to do on Thunar which I have been uh, procrastinating a bit here I should really get into that again uh, because I really want to add all, everything that I, I, I miss in Thunar it can be such a great file manager so I, I will need to work on that but I also I have this urge to, to, to rise a bit you know so I will also spend some time with the GTK CSS as a comfy, comfy little treat. <laughs> Have a great day everybody. See you. Bye.